welcome to another edition of the GSMC College Football Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Sports Network. We have a great show for you today. We will be covering uh, the NCAA decided to halt all NIL investigations until further notice after the uh, kerfuffle they had with Tennessee in the court system. Then we will get into some teams that won the Combine. The Combine is always a great place for teams to bolster their recruiting uh, pitch, so uh, tons of teams had a really, really good day and definitely will be using that into the 2025 recruiting cycle. Then we have most important uh, position coaches in the SEC, some of the unsung heroes of these staffs, uh, super important guys. And then we have another Top 10 Tuesday coming your way. Today, it's going to be uh, highest impact transfers as I see it. Uh, tons of guys out there and tons of different opinions on this. So definitely let me know uh, what you guys think about this list at the end of it. But uh, let's jump underway, right? Um, actually, before we do that, let's. Uh, I want to remind you all that we have a lot of uh Questions come in throughout the show, and the best way for y'all to get your questions on the screen, and we can have a fun back and forth here, is to use the link uh, at the bottom of your screen, gsmcpodcast.net. It's a hu- uh, huge help not only to us here at the network, but to you all to see your questions come across the screen. We can have a fun back and forth here. Again, that's gsmcpodcast.net. But let's jump underway because it has been a wild time in college football. And recently, there has been a lot of NIL battles, uh, particularly the NCAA going against Tennessee and Virginia in the court system. The NCAA seems to have lost that battle, and they have been uh, sort of waving the white flag uh, as of yesterday. Charlie Baker on Friday decided to halt all NIL investigations until further notice. Uh, This comes obviously after Tennessee um, court system decided that a lot of their enforcement of these rules was violating antitrust laws. So the NCAA is obviously in a very, very tough position here. They're slowly losing more power in the college football world, um, and it is something they have to get a control of because I think we all know that the Wild West when it comes to NIL isn't good for anyone. Uh, I don't think it's good for the coaches. I don't think it's good for the players. I don't think it's good for the fans or the teams, because first of all, you don't know who's going to be around at any given moment, really. You don't know if any guy's going to ask for a million dollars at the end of the season. If you don't pony up, he's going to walk out the door. Um, And for fans, you know, you build bonds with players. You don't want to see players uh, leave for the wrong reasons or get taken advantage of, especially in the recruiting world, because there are plenty of coaches out there that want to get the job done so bad that they might promise some money that they don't necessarily have to promise. So um, there is a lot of worry about this. I think the NCAA um, was obviously late to the party when we talk about all of this stuff. I mean, it came to California and Florida passing laws before they could actually uh, jump in and set up some rules. And then the rules they set up or not necessarily legal, it seems. So uh, they are in a very, very tough situation and in a tough situation with something that they really can't be. Um, It will really hurt the sport if NIL is allowed to go entirely unchecked for however long this lasts. So um, the NCAA really does have to get some type of structure underway or the inevitable that we've all been kind of looking towards is going to happen in the NCAA really won't be a thing anymore. There will be a new governing body at the very least over college football because that's where the majority of the NIL money is going to and where the majority of these you know big uh, cases that we've heard about, the Jane Rashada case, uh, Nico Iamaliava, all of these guys that have had uh, very interesting circumstances around NIL and um, it just doesn't help anyone to not have structure around this thing. So the NCAA is kind of on a ticking clock at this point. Uh, they have let a lot of things uh, pass them by and then have had to play catch up. And now they're at a point where if they don't catch up quickly, I could very well see, I mean, we talked about it yesterday, the SEC and the Big Ten seem to want out. Um, it, it very much seems to be pointing in the direction of the SEC and the Big Ten doing their own thing um, and kind of jumping ship and uh, setting up camp for themselves. And 
especially if NIL is not getting a, a handle on, I think it makes even more sense to do that because not only can you set up a comprehensive set of rules, but you don't have to have 134 teams following it. You only have to have 40 or whatever the end of the number is at the end of the day with the SEC and Big Ten because there are a lot of dominoes still to fall there, as we all know. Um, and there's tons of different stuff to worry about here. Obviously, with uh, the, the wrinkle that we talked about earlier is – a lot of the enforcement rules that the NCAA had in place do violate antitrust laws, and the question is, where do you start on new rules, possibly, for NIL? Where does that um, jumping-off point, because um, if you know the NCAA's rules violated antitrust, who's to say the next person that takes a crack at it won't be doing the same thing? So there's a lot at stake here. There's a lot of different... Um, viewpoints on these issues a lot of people that are against nil a lot of people that don't believe it's helpful for the game and for me personally i'm all for nil i think it it makes sense that these players that put everything on the line every single day for a university gets a cut of what they're worth um that's you know the name of sports the name of you know business in general so um it's i have no problem with them uh capitalizing off their name, image, and likeness. I have no problem with them, you know, doing all of the things and making the most money possible because, as we know, there are a lot of college kids that need money. So it's it's not a crazy thought by any means. But at the end of the day, it's not going to be helpful for anyone, especially the players, if there's no structure around this. If coaches are allowed to walk into rooms make promises, and then walk out the door with no intention of coming through on those promises, we have a problem on our hands because there are a number of kids that are going to, whether it's commit to the wrong school out of high school or uh, in the transfer portal, decide to go to a school because of the NIL money he can make but miss the opportunity to go to the school that would actually develop him as a person and a player. Um, There's so many different parts of recruiting that, if we let NIL go unchecked, unchecked and we let um, rules and regulations kind of go out the window, um, we're going to lose a lot of what makes college football college football. We're going to lose the undying support for one fan base from a team um, or one player uh, towards a team. We're going to lose some of the nuance of recruiting. There's going to be a lot of bidding wars, not so much, you know, pitching what the school can offer you, which is uh, kind of uh, a thing of a a bygone era at this point, Um, at least according to Nick Saban. He says uh, they don't talk much about student in the athlete part of uh, their visit, but uh, that's uh, another point that we can get to later. But I think... um, it just creates problems for these players, um, and the the entire sport should be catered around what makes the most sense for the players. Um, and the NIL game, pretty much since it started, has been not desirable. <laughs> I'll put it that way. It has been rough. It has been uh, up and down. No one really knows what they can or can't do, and it's why a lot of people have gotten into trouble with it because. The NCAA was playing catch-up, threw in some rules, and then no one really understood the rules uh, in action because they hadn't shown it in action because they had to play catch-up. So there were tons of problems with this from the get-go, obviously. Um, The NIL game came very quickly, and if we didn't, you know, preemptively jump in, at least the NCAA, if they didn't preemptively jump in uh, to the conversation and... uh, at least um, three or four years before the entire windfall of uh, states that pass laws, um, I think we'd be in a much better spot. I think we'd have a much better understanding of what the rules are. I think players would be much happier with the way that things run. Um, and I think schools would have, you know, at least a, a more level pay- playing field than it is today where – um, as we know, there are the haves and the have nots in this game, and uh, the haves just got a absolute gift from Charlie Baker with no uh, NIL investigations because 
a lot of money can go out of those programs with no problem. And uh, if they're left unchecked, it, it could get it could get bad very quickly. Is the way I'll put it because um, these players, I mean, they're coming out of high school or they're in college and they're trying to make money. I, I don't think there's any problem with that. I don't think there's any debate on that. And uh, coaches know that. So uh, you worry, obviously, that these kids are going to make a decision because of the dollar figure that's put in front of them and then get onto campus and for whatever reason, not necessarily that he actually doesn't like the coach because I'm sure there would be a lot of situations where they like the coach, they like the team, they like the energy around the fan base, but when you get on campus, it just doesn't feel like home, which I think a lot of kids uh, in college and po uh, right after college, like myself, would tell you that's a lot of the battle, is just finding a place that feels like you belong there, feels like a, a place that you can set up shop for a couple of years. So um, basically, all of this is going to come to a head, and it's slowly... Um, building towards probably a new entity watching over college football, whether that's the college football playoff or a totally new thing, I'm not sure. But there's going to be a busy couple of months here for the NCAA and for surrounding parties because letting NIL go unchecked is super dangerous. It increases the transfer portal rate. It increases the number of kids that are just left out of college football altogether because, as we know, not a ton of kids that go into the transfer portal actually come out with an offer. About 20% of them actually find their way to a school, and then some play lower levels, some play um, different you know types of football, but some just go back to being a student. So um, it's not good for anyone when NIL is allowed to run rampant and have uh, no checks over it. So the good news is I think answers are coming because they ca they absolutely have to. Um, I don't know what form it takes. I don't know if it's a new governing body. I don't know if the NCAA taking back control and actually getting this thing on the right track, but uh, it's going to come, and it better come quickly because if not, it could really hurt college football for quite some time. But Enough with the kind of Debbie Downer talk uh, here for the time being. Uh, we are going to take a short break here, and then when we come back, we're going to talk about some teams that won the Combine. Uh, as we know, the Combine is watched by tons of recruits, and they see which teams perform the best. So they see which teams seem to develop the guys into a position to be at the next level, and uh, there are definitely some teams that stood out, and it is a lot of the teams that you would expect. But... Uh, Stick with us and we will be right back. 